The views and opinions on this show are for entertainment purposes only. The only factual information is any story that has happened to AT2 are the parties involved. Other than that, go ahead and get you a drink, get you something to eat. Just relax and enjoy the show. Let's have fun. All right, y'all, let's get real. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Talk the Real Deal with AT2. And of course, I'm your host, AT2. How everybody doing? How everybody living? How everybody doing? Come on, y'all. All right, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe, all that good stuff. You already know the drill. Um, today is kind of special because um, I'm actually going to be interviewing someone that you guys are probably meeting for the first time. And I feel that it's important to, for me to just put out the facts out there with no emotion, just put the facts out there, tell you what it is. And you guys do with the information that you want to do. I think that it's been a thing where like, uh, there's people on different sides and people, you know, not getting along and stuff like that. He, he, this is what I'm going to do. Do whatever you want to with the information that I give you, but just know that the information that I give you is true. That's all you need to know. And you do what you want with it. I can't keep explaining why somebody is a shitty person. They're going to be a shitty person at the end of the day. And that's who they are. Um, so without further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce you uh, to my guest. Now, y'all might know her as <laughs> no, y'all know y'all wrong for saying HDJ. Yes. Uh, Home Depot Jen, but as I know her to be is Jen, and she reached out to me actually when I was going through my whole issue, and I appreciated that because this lady did not know me, and she reached out to me and was all like, hey, you know, it's messed up what's going on, and I will always be grateful for that, so I just wanted to say that before we start, but let's go ahead and introduce you guys to Jen. Jen, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello. Yay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, thank, I don't thank know you if you for want coming to on. start asking questions, you know, if you want to lead or... Um, uh, yeah, um, let me uh, let me go ahead and start by um, just saying, <laughs> you know, originally you were kind of underneath the spell of like, oh, this guy is great and people are just attacking him and you were a defender. Now, would you consider yourself like one of the top hags or you were I, never I a was, hag? Oh, okay, you I were. Was I, was, <laughs> I was top hag. I just... <laughs> I was. Yeah, not, yeah, there's no way around that one. Um, I did. I defended him all the time. I thought, poor him. He was being picked on. You know, again, you just see what you see out there. Um, and new people coming in um, as he continues, he continues to kind of reinvent himself. Right. And he'll start over, pick up new followers. And they don't know. They don't know the history or anything. So they're just going to see people like you and I speaking out about things that have happened and we're the bad guys. Um, and so that's really what happened with me because as much as people tried to make, um, and including him trying to make right. people believe like I was all aware and everything, you guys have kind of seen my social media use. I think in the last year I dip out. I mean, I dipped out of, of IG for quite a while until very recently. So that is my normal pattern. Um, right. And so, so you're not in so the know, know of everything right. that's going so on. I you're really blind my, to it. I did. And I don't want to, you know, I really don't want to focus on that. I mean, that's the past. I, I screwed up, obviously. Um, you know, maybe I need to, I still don't do this, which is silly, but I mean, like when I make friends, I don't investigate them. I don't start looking on the internet, you know, right. but maybe I need to, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't want to, focus on that. I know what I did wrong and, and, you know, repent for that. Um, right. You know, and, and I've talked to, and I've made peace with a lot of people that I had, you know, 
wronged at that point. So that's awesome. Going, yeah, I, that's important. And um, but my point is, you know, at that time, had I really known, I would have been on their side, probably going after him. I mean, I just since I was 16, I go after bullies and sometimes the only thing that works is their own language. So, right. And who knew that the quote unquote victim was actually the bully, you know, right. the I mean, exactly. and here's my part. I mean, I struggled for a little while after this all went down and mm -hmm. was hard on myself about it because I usually see those people coming from a mile away. I really do. I, I don't understand what fog happened there that I didn't see who the core of him was at that point. Not until like he was in my house, obviously. So Right. Because this man basically finessed his way into your home. You know, like he he <laughs> used that sort of manipulation as you feeling yeah. bad for him and like, oh, I need to help him. Like he looks like a sad puppy dog. And so you yeah. helped him, brought him in, fed him, clothed him, bathed well not bathed him. <laughs> you know, it's like okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, AG, too, it's, it's funny because, you know, my girlfriends know this and one of them in particular, um, and it really goes back to him. Like, I came out of that, like, what do I need to learn from this? What did I, what was the purpose of all this? You know, what, mm -hmm. what am I not getting here? Um, but I walked into 2022 with my answer <laughs> and mm -hmm. it is not feeling sorry for broken little boys anymore. And I'm serious as hell. Like, right. get out. You go get yourself a therapist. Go fix yourself. But I'm not here to help you. Like, it, it's repugnant to me at this point. So, which is, it's I, maybe it'll mellow out. But yeah, right. I mean, that's a protective thing. And so, if you're broke and what and what's worse, I'm going to say it right now because I feel this very strongly. Broken little boys come from broken moms and, mm -hmm. and bad parenting. And, right. I, and, and I've talked a lot about this with friends and, and everything um, because we all deal with this. Let's be honest. I mean, we've all got issues, childhood, you know, whatever, family. Right. We whatever. all have trauma. Right. Exactly. And so it's not your fault what happened to you as a kid. It's not your fault for your parenting or really how you formed and turned out. But when you become an adult, it is all on you. It is your turn to take responsibility and fix yourself. Cody and I even had that conversation um, about John. We really did. And I said, look, I, I can relate to the things he's gone through and, and the trauma, but you make a choice as a human being. You either roll with it and become a victim or you take charge and say, this is what I'm going to do with what happened to me. Bottom line. So, right. Um, and you have a psych background, right? Yeah, mm -hmm, I do. Um, yeah, I initially had gone into school hoping to um, become a PhD psychologist and teach mm. at the college level, do research. And I got married young and then I just kind of, you know, we moved and, and whatever. Right, I, right. You know, Life happens. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I never, and I went into a doctoral program, but didn't finish. Um, but I, what I've done is taught psychology for several years, not at a mini mall and not just two classes as <laughs> I was accused of. But right. yeah, so, I mean, it's how I think. I mean, it, it's, it's who I am and it's how I think um, as I move through the world, really. Right. So. And now um, I wanted to ask you because there's been personal attacks basically on your family and like, you know, the the black husband, black husband that was brought up like at least like 10 billion different times. And it's kind of like, right. all right, if you're trying to prove that you're not a racist, like why does the whole black husband thing come up? And then, you know, about your child and just the allegations, like, you know, if it's not too much, you know, can you kind of does uh, what do they have to do with anything with your relationship with him? Um. Let me back up. First, I'm going to show you because I don't normally wear these things like when I was doing my lives and whatever. But this is who I am. And I'm very vocal, AT2. Like my real friends know. OK, here's my little shirt. I can't stay calm. I have a black son. OK, I will. I've gotten in the trust me, October 20 or whatever. I went to a protest. I was in the face of the racist white people. I wasn't really thinking very smart there. But I mean, you know. I'm very hardcore on that stuff. Right. So um, 
I never, I guess, really suspected, you know, he had visited, visited me once, stayed with me for like a weekend when he moved to Omaha. Normal, nothing, you know, really out of the ordinary, whatever. Um, when he moved in, it was a different person than I'd ever really actually seen. I just got to see the real person. There was no <laughs> act is what it was, you know, and I, to be honest with you, um, my husband, Hey Tim, no, oh, he's in his office. I'll get him in a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, but, but, um, when he, when they got here, it was like day two. I had a person. Oh, Hey baby. Um, I had a personal thing. I was like, I just felt like they were going to be shady and dirty. And Tim can tell you, do you remember when they first got here? And I, and you, I, you were like, do you want me to kick them out? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was like, no, we invited them here. You know, we invited them here all the way from yeah. New York. So did something like, happen like where you felt like, oh, I need to get them the hell up out of here? It was... It was a lot. I, I can't, I think a part of it was a vibe, just the vibe, but the vibe. Like, I don't even remember. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know it sounds hokey or whatever, but oh, I mean, no, 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 no. That's a real thing. You get a vibe energy, from somebody yeah, when the they energy, come into your space. Meaning, yeah. I, I, I just, I felt it. I mean, I, I almost felt like immediate regret, but then I'm like, Hey, we offered to help them. We asked them to call, come all the way out here. You know, let's give it a shot. We'll keep an eye on things. Um, and, and things just progressively gotten worse, um, over, over time, you know, the longer they were here, we were at a rental for about a month. Um, but the first time the racial stuff came up, do you remember that night, Tim? It was like, right, it was right after Christmas. We were at the rental mm -hmm. and we had just watched Saturday night live and they were mocking Trump, which triggered our friend. Um, and I just, I like how your eyes just popped up and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he's, he's over here just, um, but what was it about? Oh, some, for some reason he went on a diatribe. I, I don't remember how it got there about, um, don't you think white men oh, have yeah, it really was, bad in this yeah, country? Yeah, that one. And I was like, now AG2. Wait, just just a saying that alone. This man said this while this man was financially supporting his ass, one hundred percent. Is that not the biggest oxymoron you've ever heard? You're sitting there on your ass, dr look, <laughs> drinking, you know, supplying him alcohol, food, putting a roof over his head, right? And he's got it so bad. I was like, are you? And so he, they got a lecture for me. I mean. He's not going to yeah, tell you about so it. Old I, mean, I gave him the rundown. I gave him, you know, <laughs> racism for dummies 101. You know, it's the, he, he, you know where he's caught in. He really doesn't believe he's racist. He really doesn't. Because yeah, he doesn't believe it. I know that. He doesn't believe it, even though he is. But he doesn't believe it. I know. It. And then his, his well, women don't believe that either. He is the, but I have black friends and I'm not racist, but yeah. he's that guy. He is that guy. That's yeah, who he is. You can still have a black friend and be racist. You know, like. Right. <laughs> I could be married to him. I could still be racist. If I looked at this man and I was like, oh, I got one of the good ones. The rest of the world. You know, I could be racist and be banging him every night. Okay? Exactly. What do people not understand about racism? It is your thoughts and behavior. It does exactly. not matter. Your black friends, for the people that say that, your black friends are acquaintances. They're not your friends. Trust me. They're not. They're not. They go home and say, oh, shit, I had to deal with that one again. That's what they say. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. So, I, I'm going to get off my soapbox and let you talk yeah. now. No, can I ask him, like, how, how did he feel it like, was the, like, because you know when someone says some ignorant, like, what goes to your mind is the... I, I either cuss this motherfucker out or I just like, just whatever, just kind of ignore it. Like, you know, like what went through your head as a black man oh, to hear I, him say like, he's yeah. such like, I, I would have been like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like you have it so hard in this country. Like, what the fuck do you mean? You know, it is, you, you know, it's one of those things that, yeah, you, you do you do just want to go ahead and pop off. But at the same time, you know, unfortunately, you know, this is something that I had to deal with my whole life. Right, and even right. 
what made this hard is like where I work at, mm-hmm. you know, I had to work very hard in my career to get where I'm at. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to work extra hard. You know, one degree is not enough. I have to go get my MBA. I have to do this. I have to right. do this. You and you're always that told I- that's not good enough, no matter how many degrees, you know, right. somebody right. else is going to get it and you got to work your hardest to try to get to that level, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. So, so then, you know, you have somebody that, you know, you go out on a limb because you think that they're a friend you're trying to help them out. And when statements like that comes out, it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, let me inject because here's the difference between he and I, and I've seen it and, and it's what he's talking about, but he's so desensitized. He just bubbles off. You know what I mean? He just right. puts the arm on, lets it roll off his back. And I, obviously it's been a learning process for me and right. I was relatively woke when we got together, but things have, have heightened since then because I live mm-hmm. with this man. I live with him every day. I experience these things with him and now I know how it feels. So he will, you know, kind of shut down, calm down and take the docile stance where I'm like, oh, hell no. You know, and I, I have. I mean, we've had some experiences with cops and this girl did not shut right. up. But you know what? They're not taking me away. And you know, they're not going to take me away. Right. Exactly. Get the right. ticket. Let's get out of here. That's, right. That's, that's no. And he, I know. And I feel bad for him in those situations because he's docile. But I'm not letting those. Right. You, you away. And, and you do get numb to it. Like it's to the feeling like when things happen to you, you just kind of get numb. And it's so like, OK, well, it's a um, I don't want to say numb. It's a survival tactic. That's it what is. it is. It's a survival, it is a survival tactic. Technique. Absolutely. It, it, it's it what I learned. And so, you yeah. know, having somebody in your home like that, it's almost like, yo, I can't believe I let because you never really know someone until they live with you. That's one of right. the things, you know, you didn't know this man until he lived with you. So were there like other things that you had seen, not just racial, just in general, like uh, what's going on here? He is what you see um like in his rages and everything you know you get little blips in video that is how he is all the time all the time he is amped like that all of the time and bitching and i mean raging i mean it's you know it's not just uh, built up to this i mean that is how he lives and cody calms him down a lot honestly, before he gets on camera or don't do this. And sometimes you hear that, you know, on the videos like, no, no, don't. No, that is how he lives. He lives in a constant state of hysteria and drama. And it it really is. Right, right, right. It's a lot of like trying to calm him down. Like, did, did you ever see them like fighting in the home or anything like that? Well, as you know, you know, it's funny because I had to think of it. I happened to think of another part of what led to that. And I think this is significant, too, because, you know, we're obviously very focused on the black community right now with what he said. And and it's a problem. But it does span beyond just, you know, towards the black community. Um, It's just any other community, other, you know. Yeah, the others other and um it started it really in retrospect before we got to the big incident a few days before that what what led i really think it led to that build up was um avery from the show um you know i've I've been okay i've been friends with her since she got on the show honestly and it was because of him i mean she you know but um, she and I just took to each other. I adore her. I just adore everything about her. She's a spunky, spunky girl. Um, and she didn't even know that he was staying with me at the time. And she DM'd me and said, hey, Jen. Yeah, she didn't even know. And she like, yeah, and she DM'd me and said, hey, Jen. She's like, could you talk to John? Because he is flipping out. He's going off on me and Omar. Somebody. Oh no, I think they in a neck. Oh no, hold on, let me see. Oh. Okay, yeah, they're internet. Um I'm gonna go ahead and uh post the link just in case she needs it again. Let me go ahead and do that. Hold on, y'all. Let me uh post the link again. 
Oh man. Oh no, no, no. That's not the link. Oops, oops, oops. Hold on, y'all. Technical difficulties. Don't worry. Oh, here's here we go. Here we go. <laughs> As I like to call it, your internet, your internet went out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit more used to this StreamYard stuff. I used to panic when I'd be on one of these lives with someone, and I'm like, I don't know what to, how to fix it. Um, but no, I, I remember where I was. So, so yeah, Avery had you know just like messaged me like for intervention, like, please, can you just help smooth this over? Like, I don't know what's going on. Can you just talk to him? And then she sh like showed me what was going on and the messages that she got. And, you know, there's that whole page, like 90 day facts, 90 day fiance facts or something that. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. They were the ones that were posting all of, you know, the different, things he said about is Islam and Muslims and all that. Oh, yeah. So that's when yeah. it started. And I said, Avery, you know what? I said, yeah. She, I said, he's here. You know, he's staying with us. I'll, he's outside having a cigarette right now. Um, he had just gotten up. It was like five, almost 5 p.m. Just gotten up for the day. Went out to have a cigarette back there. Our couch was here at the time where all this stuff is. And um, Tim was working from home that day or something because he was sitting with me. And John walks back in and I said, Hey, I'm like, I just got a message from Avery and like, I couldn't even finish my sentence. And he went ballistic, ballistic. Oh, Sucker! I hope I'm not getting you in trouble by using the, F Oh word. no, it's fine because I already said okay. a few cuss words earlier. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, he was like, fuck her and fuck that bitch and man just went off. He was angry that I didn't see the messages he sent me the night before, because again, I don't, I'm sorry. Like my life is not dedicated to you. I don't get up and, Oh my God, what did John do today? And what do I need right, to know? Right. Um, he treated you like he a fan. You like a fan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I, he wanted me to be like his biggest fan, but I, I didn't watch his, I don't, I don't give a shit. I mean, I was his friend and that was it. Um, and so anyway, so he walks, goes off. And I was like, holy shit, what just happened? Like, I don't even know what's going on here. And I, you know, that, that point I was like, oh no, this is not going to end well. And so we kind of parted ways. I didn't talk to him for a day or whatever. Um, and I think he must've texted me or something, or I, no, I think that day I looked at what it was and I texted him and I said, uh, okay, now I see what you're talking about. And if I were Avery, I would never speak to you again. I'm like, this is completely inappropriate. You're being absolutely abusive. They they weren't being disrespectful to him at all. And he was doing at his all. typical at John, all. going off, attacking, nasty, interweaving the whole, you know, Islamic thing. And, uh, you know, just, it. Ugh. and so this is just my theory. I mean, I can't prove it, but I do think that's what set him off, like on a rage. So then two days later, um, they'd gone to work that Friday night. They were working together at the bar, came home three 30 in the morning, right up through here. And I was asleep. I went to bed like at 1130 that night and heard them kind of arguing a little bit. Um, so I turned up my TV so I could go back to sleep. And then I heard like instantaneous, like slapping, bam, 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 bam. Like someone was going, you know, like in the cartoons or whatever. Right. That's what it sounded right. like. And I jumped up out of bed, came out here to find him having Cody bent over my banister, trying to throw him over the banister. Oh my yeah. God. Let's see. The banister there. Yeah. I'm trying to throw him like, over? over? Throw him over the banister. Um, and I was like, whoa, dude, I'm like, you can't be doing this shit here. I have a child in this house. Right. I'm Before like, we uh, continue, I do want to read this real quick. Uh, thank you. Listen, okay. Truxy. He said, he says, uh, J or, uh, he or she says, Jen has been talking about racism for a long time. This is not a new, in quotation, subject. Check her Instagram no. before you make up lies about her. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you, Leslie, for the uh, super oh. sticker. I appreciate that as well. And thank you, Jen. He's trying to throw um, Cody over the banister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. And so, um, so I'm, you know, like what, I mean, it was just, you know, all over the place. 
And um, I went to go wake up Tim because I'm like, you know, obviously I don't want to jump in the middle of it. Go to wake up Tim and he's a really hard sleeper. And, you know, you get wake up in the middle of the night. So I wake him up and he's like, I'm like, dude, you got to get up. Like he's, you know, they're fighting or I don't know what I said. And he kind of was like, oh, okay. Um, went back to sleep because he thought that it was just John on one of his lives because of the mm. noise and ruckus and went back to sleep. And so I left them in the living room. I came back and they were in their bedroom, which is now my husband's office. Um, and there's no locks on these old doors, the bedroom doors. They don't have locks. So I just opened the door. Right. And John was in the corner there. And I walked in just to him throwing Cody on the floor. Floor. I think that's really what. Like body slammed him? Yeah. Yeah. When you see those bruise pictures, I think it came from that. Not even the banister. I think it was when he did that. Um, and I looked at him and I said, because I, well, I'll get to the police part later, but I looked at him and I said, you lay one more hand on that man. And I am calling the cops. I promise you that. I'm like, I promise you. And so mm-hmm. by then Tim, I think I went back in after that. That's what it was. After I said that went back in and woke Tim up. I'm like, you got to get up. I'm serious. And he got up that time. Oh. John, this is the things that he would say to me were so mind blowing. I was like, is this guy in another universe or like where it just blew me away. One of the things he said to me when Tim didn't get up the first time is Tim's not coming because he agrees with me. Hmm? Like what, what, (laughs) what about my husband makes you think that he's into wife beating or spouse beating. Like what, what about, right. <laughs> do you think any normal human being would be like, yeah, go ahead. Knock him around yeah. a little bit. That's probably what he needs. Right. And like, he said that to me and he was completely <laughs> serious. I mean, I think, I, I don't know. I'm not even going to try and figure out if he was really serious or I, I don't know. Question for you. And hopefully this isn't too hard to bring up, but where was your son during this time? Like in his room. And this is something that John tried to play with before um, because he was in his room. He was awake, but he was under his covers and he told me, he's like, no, mom, I was awake and I could hear it, but I, I was scared. So I stayed under my covers. Um, so sorry. And so, so John twisted that and said, because Tim said, I don't know, Tim said something about him being asleep or I don't know, whatever it was. And John said, no, that was a lie. It was a lie. I didn't wake up his, even Tim said that Jace was asleep. It didn't disturb him. I, you know, everything he would just try. When we said we kicked him out because we kicked him out. I was like, you need to get the fuck out of my house right now. Right. Don't you ever come back here. <laughs> I mean, trust me, I, that man. And imagine this now, AT2, because nobody wants to imagine this up in my face right here. Eyes bulging, spittle in my face. Oh, Cody was afraid. Cody, I know, right? Oh, what did that Cody breath smell like? Oh my god! You know, he only showered once in in like the two or three, two and a half or whatever two months that he was here. He showered one time, but one time he only showered. Detail, oh, one time. My. The day he started work. Yeah, once. And so but he, anyway, he, so he probably bathed himself in alcohol more than likely, but keep going. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that probably much killed most of the bacteria coming out. So out of his pores. But um, but yeah, I mean, he was up in my face and I, the, I literally, I'll never forget this moment because yeah. I looked at him and I said, John, you know, you can't get under my skin. You can't. Mm-hmm. And he said, I know, Jen, you're such a bad bitch. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Cody at the time was like, he was kind of stunned because as soon as I came and he got in my face, like he left Cody alone. Like Cody didn't even exist. It was kind of weird. You know, like he just all of a sudden forgot he was fighting with his husband and came for me. And that and Tim came out and that's when he got in the middle of him, you know, got him out the door. No, we didn't literally throw him out, pick him up and throw him over the balcony. No, he got kicked out of my house because he beat his husband in my home. 
Right. And, and what was, you know, what was I supposed to do? I mean, I worked with domestic violence victims that I used to do that. I couldn't kick Cody out. I mean, he, I couldn't, I, I couldn't in good conscience do that to right. a domestic violence victim. I, I just couldn't. Right, because no telling what would have happened if he went that night, and you know, I, 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 you know, I I didn't want him to stay. I mean, I really didn't, but I mean, I wasn't, I I couldn't do that. So, we just were going to ride out the storm with that one. But, um, you know, it was my, it's just my nature to support somebody trying to get out of a relationship like that. So, right. So you did let Cody stay for a while. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have it. I mean, he had to get out or I was calling the cops. That's all he was worried about was his ass not going to jail that night. And I, in retrospect, I wish I would have just called the cops that night. Well, yeah. On his way out, that's when he threatened CPS, by the way, because he knew, I, like I said, I told him there's nothing you can do to me. You can't say anything to me. You're not going to get under my skin. The only way to mess with me is to go through my child. And well, yeah, because remember I said I was going to call the cops, and then he said he was going to call CPS. I said I didn't care, and you guys were just like, if he calls CPS, that's going to get my – you know, they they don't care what the call is about. They want to get right. know, my son involved. So I was right. like, look, I'm not trying to get my son involved. The agreement was you get your stuff, you leave. We'll call it that way. But I should have called because these people call CPS anyway, you know, a few times, so – it was kind of kick in the face, but that was an agreement. We didn't kick him out. We just said, like, look, take your stuff. And well, no. he. Well, I mean, we were like throwing him honey. out the door. <laughs> no, no. We not throwing him out the door, but he was not welcome in this home. And he actually right. even, he did try to come back, like, a week later. Like, I remember Cody telling me that John called or texted and said, I'm not welcome there, I guess. And it's like, is he out of his mind? Is, is he out of his mind? He thought he was going to be able to come back? Hell yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. So. So I okay. So I have a few questions off of that. So you know, it's so the CPS thing that was basically a revenge plot. That wasn't anything to mm-hmm. where he was worried or anything. He, that was a revenge plot because he said, right. you know, your son would cry on his shoulder and so, you know he was trying <laughs> to say these things last night. And it was all like, why would if anything yeah. he would never my cry son, to you? you know what? I, I normally <laughs> would not do this, but I, I will let him. I think it would be therapeutic for him to come and, and say a few things. Um, okay. You know, the fact of the matter was, for real, uh, first of all, you know, whatever. If you've ever been in real, yes, we have arguments sometimes. We don't right. let things get out of the control. Um, during that time, we were really, I mean, we should never have invited them. We were under so much stress with the construction of our house and how badly mm. we got screwed by contract. It was, it was a disaster. And so the contractor was actually like pitting my husband and I against us. So there was, mm. we did. We had a couple arguments or whatever. We did. It's marriage. Right. I've been with this man for 15 years. I love him, but I still want to poke his eyes out sometime. I mean, he's a dude. Sorry. You know, he wants to poke my eyes out sometimes. It, that's marriage. <laughs> right. Sorry. It's marriage. You, you know, know? I mean, they should other. know anything about that. But, you know, they're right. over there actually fighting each other. But they have right. something to say about your relationship. Oh, right. Critical. So. You know, um, my my son liked Cody. He did like Cody because Cody was kind to him and talked to him be like, hey, bud, how'd your day go at school? Hey, you know, one time when Jace got in trouble, Cody helped him write a note saying sorry to me, you know. So he liked Cody. Um, but the, yeah, there was a night that, you know, we had an argument and he was crying. And he doesn't usually what my son says, like if we even raise our voices, he'll be like, hey, hey. Keep it down. Like, no, no, no <laughs> argument. We're like, okay. Like, I told him that when he was little. Like, if we ever are arguing and whatever and you're getting upset, like, come in and say, hey, you need to stop it and we'll listen to you. Because right. I understand how a kid feels. Um, and so, you know, but yeah, he, he did cry. But now it's like, oh, John was his savior and he would cry to him all the time about how horrible it is here and what horror. He's so full of shit. He's so full of shit. He didn't interact with my child. He didn't do anything. He was never, ever guaranteed you ever left alone with my child. Ever. Mm. I would never. Thank you for clarifying that because definitely, why would you let him out of all people watch your child? Oh, my God. 
No. And I wouldn't even, when we were at the rental, their little room was, it was a real weird old setup. Their room was, you walked in and, and it was right there by the garage. And then you came up to the rest of the house. My son's room was right there. And then ours was a little further back and Jace would go to bed and they would still be up there. And I would keep going back and forth. Like I was, I, I didn't want, I, if they were upstairs, I was up because oh, I'm, okay. like, I'm sorry. I just didn't want them anywhere near my kid's room. Or alone right. With you just want to make sure it. everything's okay. Because at the end of the day, he's still a stranger, you know? Right. Well, no. And they said some inappropriate things, which I was thinking about today, considering what they did to you. So I think it's relevant to bring this up here now. Oh, okay. yeah. Before I you do. get into that, um, someone okay. asked you, um, uh, and thank you real um I is it ification. Um, uh, uh, he says, uh, to your knowledge, does Cody have any contact let's with his family? Let's talk about Cody's family. Let's do that. Okay, Cody, let's talk about that first. Okay, Cody's mother loves him with a passion. Mm. Cody's mother would take him back and support him and pay off all of his bills if he would leave that piece of shit. Let me call Cody's that mom because I got some bills that I need paid. You know my ne my right. credit score negative three hundred. Let me call his mom. <laughs> what Cody's mom did was tough love. She used to help him wow. and whatever, but she finally put her foot down. And that's what you do with domestic violence relationships, by the way. The the supporting people eventually stop helping you and being there for you until you get your shit together and come back. He could have left here. And went to his mother's, but that would have meant no more John, period. She will not have it. Oh, she cannot so does, stand John. Does John have like some kind of hold on it? Like, is there something that he has like over Cody's head where Cody feels like he no. can't escape from this relationship? No. Or Cody Does he um, like the clown? No, that's it's no. really not it. Cody Cody also has a lot of past things. Um, that has shaped who he is, okay? And he's kind mm. of like, in his real form, um, I don't know how else to say it, in his real form, in his natural state of, natural state you know, of by himself, <laughs> um, he's a, he actually is a very gentle soul. He's kind of childlike. Mm. Um, and he just wants peace and happiness and love. He's, uh, he's very a very typical domestic violence victim. He's very codependent, very subservient to John, waits on him hand and foot, tries to put the fires out, tries to keep him from blowing. You know, it, it, he's got a very typical, it's just very extreme. And right. so he, when he, it's clear when he gets with John, he kind of just takes on John's persona, which is the case with other people too. I mean, oh, I think that's, that's true. why. That's why he, t I mean, he was the easiest domestic violence victim that I ever spoke with. And I, like I said, I worked with domestic violence victims. He right. so did it. He didn't realize that it was really wrong. He's like, we're two guys. That's what guys do. I'm like, no, Cody, your partner should never. Right. Beat you, use and you, you this can way. be in a same sex relationship and still experience domestic violence. Right. That's a right. myth that people put out there. You can still experience it. It's right. still. And so he just took the typical information in. And that is why when you see the stuff about, well, you know, the little um, phone calls that recently came up of um, him calling the cops, saying he's worried about his husband. He hasn't talked to him for three weeks. That's because Cody was getting his shit together. He was like, yeah, I can do better than you. I can, oh, I can get better. that's where that came yeah, from. He was really doing that. Eight. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Until... Julie came in and spread her love and all the ladies dug in and, and Christy Weber and all of them hooking at them, wearing them down Ooh. until. And now and I wanted to ask you because like, uh, you know, all those people kind of came out of nowhere and kind of enter uh, intervene in something and then that's how you know this thing really blew up like were you once friends with the mods and the hacks and stuff like that this is the weirdest thing AT2 this let me tell you something I mean I realized in the process and, and after the fact that John this man accepted mine and my husband's help before he even got here had fake accounts of me and was talking shit about me and making up lies about me. What? He told oh. me. 
Yeah. I, um, I was teaching psych part-time and like back in 2019, our college went and put like all the, the intro psych classes like online. It's like a statewide thing. It's all standardized and whatever. And I was doing face-to-face. That's what I like to do. So Mm -hmm. there weren't, when that happened, it took all those classes and there's only a few time faculty and like all the face to face had to go to them for their contracts. So there was really nothing for me and I could have gone teaching online, but I don't like, I just don't like that because it's like, I hate to say it, but it's not, um, you're just grading and and making sure people are doing their work. It's kind of babysitting. It's not teaching and, you know, so that's really happened. But I found out that he was telling um, all those little hags that I didn't even know about. I didn't even know these people that I got fired from my job for doing drugs. Yeah, what? this is while he's my friend. This is before that man set foot in my house in November, in December 2000. Yes, yes, <coughs> yes. Talk about audacity. No wonder why he was puking and all that stuff on the way and freaking out. Yeah, he was already trying to destroy my life, and then he was going to come sit in the middle of it. <clears throat> he's lucky I didn't know that when he walked in this door. He's lucky. Right. It was almost like he plotted against you, like almost so he could have a setup to like, just in case something happened, he could take you down. He plants little seeds. That's what he does. AT2, do know that. That is what he does. Every one of his friends, I don't care who you are, I don't care how far back you go. If you've ever been friends with John, he has got an arsenal of shit on you that he has saved. For when that friendship burns, he's going to put it all out there on you. That is literally his MO. Right, because last night um, he he tried to threaten me. He was all like, you know, you're over there with because he's jealous of my friendship with Sherelle. And he keeps all like, I have messages of what she said about you. And it's all like, okay, well, if she said stuff while we were beefing, I don't care. Like, you know, when right. he keeps bringing up old stuff, you know, if it was a text message from today, Hey, okay, I could see you, but like, okay, if you're bringing up old stuff of people who didn't like together and then they became friends, like that doesn't matter. Like he has right. like this jealousy, this ammunition. Like you know, he saves all these messages and everything he like that. It his vault. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that was my issue with him last night. I was all like, so every time I, you know, every time you say oh, well, you need to apologize and you need to have a conversation with me. You keep dropping little bits of information of stuff that I didn't know and maybe the public didn't know and you're saving little information to try to use it against me. And it's all Mm -hmm. like, I can't trust that you're telling me everything that you know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because you're, mm-hmm. it's probably a thing where, okay, say if last night, because, you know, I did click the link and he didn't let me talk because he thought I was apologizing. You ain't getting no motherfucking apology. But anyway, <laughs> apologize. uh, right. Apologizing is nuts. But anyway, he, he was trying to. Um, for having, having known you, that's what I'll apologize for. How about right. that? Right. But um, sorry to cross the path. Okay. <laughs> right. He kept trying to get this apology out of me and this apology, apology. And it's like, no, there's no apology to have. But if say so, I did apologize and we squash whatever, he would still mm-hmm. try to use things against me and ammunition. And so, oh. so there can never be any peace between us. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I mean, take it back to the fact, yeah, there's people that give him second chances. But, you know, remember what I just told you, that he was working on trying to screw me over before he came to live in my house. Like, so, yeah, there, there's there's, there's no bottom line with him. There is, he, it's just what he does. It's what he right. knows. It's, he can't have people in his life unless he has ammunition to keep them. Right. Keep them or whatever yes that is the only way his all right i'm gonna say this again i've said it a long time ago all of his relationships are transactional there are no emotions involved transactional what can you do for me what can you do for me and if you can't do anything for me you are useless to me that is all that man knows it's all he knows Right. I thought maybe his one friend was, uh, you know, uh, mod 148, but she's not really his friend because she paid for that Atlantic City trip. You know, she paid for that whole trip. The the people that are sticking with him, AT2, are just like him. They're all personality disordered. I assure you that. Um, Right. 
they seriously they're all they're all this cut from the same cloth they don't they don't have yeah. good morals and they don't care about other human beings they're vicious and dark and angry hurtful yes. people it's, and then they coagulate together you know so yeah. you know because you mentioned this Christy woman, and I don't know too much about her, but is that Christy Denver that was on his show, or no. that's enough? Okay, a somebody totally different. Okay, okay, okay. He's got yeah. No, he's got a lot of Christies. I do think this Christy <laughs> certainly tries to make some of her antics um, fall on Christy Denver, so that she'll take the rap. Christy Weber, who is in Omaha, oh, is tell us more. She, she's the, she's the main hag. Julie's not the main hag. Let me tell you that. Julie's not oh. the main hag. She's like, Christy Weber is like, you remember the Wizard of Oz? Yes. Yes. And the actual wizard behind the curtain? Yeah, behind the actual. <laughs> That's who Christy Weber is. Oh. She keeps her, she keeps her public face out of it. I don't do anything. I'm not involved. She is such a vicious, cold, <laughs> soulless bitch. She really is. <laughs> she really is. She, she's as dark and demented as him. Oh and my she, God. Her ass has stayed. She is a man, imagine, uh, has managed to float around in the background without anybody coming for her. And she's really like his number one. I think really with her, he's hoping that one day she'll invite him to live with her. He he calls, he used to call her his trust fund baby. <laughs> so maybe she'll make a room for them one day. I don't know. Right. So um, now we know that he used to live with you, but did you ever fund him? Like give him money and stuff like that? No. Okay. No, the only time I gave him money was right before he came um, when he, his car was, you know, he had a boot on it somewhere in New York or whatever, and he was panicking and begging and he couldn't get his car and it was $900. And so we actually borrowed money um, at the time because it was Christmas. I mean, there was a lot of things going on, but right. it was not a good time for money for us. Um, so I asked him, I'm like, what do you think? Blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, well, I'll just, I'll get some money from my mom. And I was, so he basically took, what did we give him? Like seven, I think it was 650 or 700. And he said, I'm going to make payments to you. I'm going to pay you every week. I'm going to pay you $50 every week. He paid $50 once. And once. you've never seen the rest of that money. No. And then he moved in with us the next month. <laughs> So this man got six hundred and fifty dollars and moved in with the oh he he is a known scammer he is a scammer mm -hmm. and you know going back because I kind of wanted to talk about um sorry to jump around but ninety day fiance no. because it amazes me how like the show is about you know the clash of two cultures coming together and making a beautiful family and stuff like that you know how mm -hmm. is it that this man is so ignorant and he has all these ties to 90 day and stuff like that. Like, I don't, I don't understand it because he is such I'm a gonna bigot. Tell you, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is, and it's the honest to God truth. I, the way that we met or whatever was mm -hmm. back on Twitter. You know, I was into 90 day from the, the get go. It was, it started right when my son was a baby, you know, and I was at home and like, stay-at-home moms have to have some escape. And that was my escape. You know, I, I got into it. And so I started like tweeting about it and whatever. And you know, there's Leia. Leia, you, he, he's scared of Leia. Hey, oh. Leia. <laughs> he's scared of big dogs because his aunt's do dog, Rottweiler, ran after him one time. So oh. he's really terrified of big dogs. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway... Okay, Leia, you disturbed us. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I came across following, you know, 90 Day people or whatever. And he was really funny. I mean, like I got his humor and jokes and, and posts and whatever. And we'd go back and forth. And that's how we became friends. At mm. that time, I mean, he was just, and I didn't know. I really didn't know anything like that. He was trying to get on shows and stuff back then. I had no idea. Right. Um, his Twitter account was like, he had like 4,000 followers. I mean, lots of people have way more than that. So mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and he was, 
just getting into it. I mean, I was there when he met Beth and started doing his little Periscope videos. In fact, there was one time he didn't think that Beth was going to show up and he was asking me if I would do it with him. And I'm like, all right, if I absolutely have to, I will, but you know, and she ended right, up but showing she up. <laughs> so that's how it started. And he just slowly built a following on there. Um, and then he was also getting into the real housewife stuff. And I think this is where, Christy uh, Weber in Omaha came along. Oh, okay. okay. I, someone had asked, and thank you for the uh, super chat, but what uh, mod number is Omaha Christy? She has no number. She really stays on, I don't know. I can tell you, oh. I can tell you this much. This okay. one's for you, bitch. Okay. Um, any accounts you see floating around out there by by him and hagging and whatever, if you see like 77 at the end of it, you can pretty much guarantee that's Christy Weber. Oh, like explosive. Oh. Yeah, like her. Hey, Jace. Hey, come here, buddy. Hold on a second. Hi. Okay. Come here. Hey, do you want to? Okay, here's your. Okay, calm down, bro. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> um, and I want you to behave. I want you to behave. Okay. 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 <laughs> How do you feel about John Yates? He's garbage. <laughs> Why do you say liar? He's garbage. Hey, the kid what? said it, so it must be right. true. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's your opportunity, Jace. Look, okay, don't be afraid. Really, you're afraid of the camera. You have your own. You don't should. be afraid. Um, <laughs> well, seriously, here's your opportunity, though, to say anything you want to say. And don't say weird things like, <laughs> who, you know, he poops on himself or something. <laughs> don't say weird stuff. <laughs> Like, you know, be mature and say how that made you feel. Like, how, how did all that make you feel? How did you feel when John called CPS on you? I felt like you were trying to tear her. I do know what you're saying, babe. Yeah, terrorize is a big word. Yeah. Oh, my old. God. And you know what? It, it's sad because this is really, you know, take the jokes out of it. This is something that um, is going to stick with him. You know, yeah. that's something that he, he doesn't realize. My child's life by doing that. Not only that, and you know, and I'm not. I think this needs to be said. I'm not saying it to tarnish or you know sh shame my husband. But when the cops showed up over this, and Cody can verify this, he had tears in his eyes. Oh. You don't fucking call the cops to a black man's house. You don't they, weaponize. They, they, there you go. Women, you fucking piece of shit. Right. I was so angry. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. All right. You can go I'm now. Get out, <laughs> Get out of here. But no, it's true. And, and you know, and granted, you know, I know it just got emotion. You said it like that, but yeah. you because don't call the cops to a black person's house just because you're mad because that could right. be the last fucking time you ever see them you right. don't know what could have happened they could have came in with guns blazing and for you right. to just call cops to a black man's home because you know on his channel he was also inciting people to call the cops on me and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so when you do that you don't know what situation you're getting us into doing that playing stupid youtube games you know or does he or does he or and does is that why he did it is, is he really this dumb? Is he really this oblivious to what's going on? He's not that oblivious. No, he's not. He's very manipulative and mm -hmm. dark and cruel. Keep that in mind. And so when that, when I, I mean, I was handling it. And then when I saw that, when I saw my husband look like that, I saw fire. If that man would have been standing in front of me right then, <laughs> it would not have been a pretty sight. Right. You know? Right. You know what? Why don't you talk for a minute so I can go to the bathroom? You can be my stand in. <laughs> right. And Tim, uh, and Tim, thank you for coming on. I do appreciate that. Um, I wanted to ask if it's not too much like, what were your thoughts going into when, you know, this man had called CPS to your home? Like, you know, what that did to you? Like, you know, just as me as a black man and you are a black man, just knowing that wh what's going on in this country, no, like, what was yeah. going through your head, you know? You know, it's makes me want to tear up right now. Um, you know, it's <clears throat> again. I have to work very hard to get where I'm at right now. 
right, put in the right. perspective of that I go out on a limb to invite people in my home to help them out. And as a revenge tactic, you know, we just we're recently new in this neighborhood. It's a uh, maybe one other black family here. <laughs> you know, that's not too many. So we're a predominantly white neighborhood. In right. this area, you know, we kind of locked out. We, we're actually in a good, what they would consider upper scale area and put that in perspective. And, you know, me driving in and out of this neighborhood, I've already seen the cops kind of like. What you, you know, doing people, here? You yeah, know. Yeah, what yeah. Is, <laughs> we know how it is. This happened. It's an opportunity for two of them to show up. And it's kind of like. You know, I want to cheer up right now. It's like, oh, right. I, I got to go through this. I just right. gave them an excuse, regardless of whether or not it's true or not. I gave them care. an excuse to look at me in a different way in, an, in a good neighborhood that, you know, this is going to work out for my son. This house, this is his house. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> and right. now that, like, I, I usually don't care what people think. But when you do a reputation damage that's in the eyes of the law like that, people talk. So, I mean, that, that's, it's kind of like, you know, I'm working all this. I, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's really tough. And what goes through my head is like, you think, all right, the world is getting better. You know, it, it, is it getting better? And then it just brings us a step back. It just brings me back down to like, you know, right. what? what should I be continue to be nice? Should should I invite? So so now it's like, you know, I, I try to be a good hearted person, but it, it, is that even worth it now because of the current climate that we're in right now? And 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 and, and right. it's kind of scary because now I'm like, look, they they have an excuse. Right, yeah, right. We're fortunate. We're fortunate. And like you're always gonna have to be concerned. Like, okay, I need to not be you know, quote unquote, aggressive or angry mm -hmm. because then they're going to fit me into this stereotype, you know? I, I, I it's his persona. I, it's his persona. I, I it's can. his protection. I know. I mean, I was talking to a friend about that today. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's very docile. He appears, that's not who he is, but that's his protection. You know, he mm -hmm. becomes very docile because he's looking out for himself. Yeah, because growing up in the years, you know, I've, I've had my experience with the cops, unfortunately. And, you know, now that I'm a dad, it's like th th there's way too much going through my head. It's like, look, this is just not me anymore. You know, I, I have to teach him. You know, I have to have those conversations with him that when you get pulled over by the cops, this is how you have to act. Right. And now, you know, right. they're swirling around and things like that. I'm like, it, 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 do I really have to be having those conversations today? You know, I, th I thought, you know, moving on up or whatever. You know, we don't have to worry about some of these things. But no, it's right. still... It's, it's 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 brutal. It's it's, it's yeah. really brutal, and you know it hurts. It, it hurts. I I want to tear up right now because I'm like, just those memories of seeing the cops come in. I'm like, and it's two of them, and I'm like, damn. Like <laughs> and you know they oh, let's go see your son. You know they want to talk to him, hearing that, and I'm thinking like, you know, what? and what they were saying is that you know we're neglecting, we're abusing him. You know we're drunks, we're, we're this and that. All of drugs. that dr said drugs, I, yeah. Said drugs. I raped his husband. This man said I raped Cody. What? Yes. Yeah. So I, I get two oh. cops coming in and talking about drugs and alcohol and neglect and things like that. And yeah, I just I I, I couldn't hold it. I'm like, I got to watch what I do. Yeah. I got to keep I, seriously keep my hands out and just I. That is Check that me. is crazy, uh, mm -hmm. and and thank you, Sherelle. She said thank you for sharing your story. Huh. Um, oh, you know, yeah. it, it touches a lot of people because, like, you know, just going through just the motions of like having this man call the cops, uh, you know, for false allegations, and just him being able to do that and just be like, oh, it, it's whatever, and not even have any kind of decency, any kind of remorse. And again, I want to reiterate, it was a lie, a bold-faced lie, yeah, and tried yeah. to destroy you guys. And it's not that. It's like the toll that it takes on my son. I mean, do what you want to me. The toll that it takes on him, seeing him 
you know, when they, when they want to evaluate, talk to a kid, cops take him away. Yeah. He was traumatized. And then later CPS shows up. Mm-hmm. You know what? He, he's got to go through that. It don't stop there. CPS, they call the schools. You know, <laughs> you got to do that. You know, ask for medical, all this stuff. And oh. they didn't do it once. They did it multiple times. And, uh, you know, one of the last times we're doing his virtual learning here. Guess who shows up at the door? CPS while he's in class doing his virtual learning. And what do we got to say? I, it, it's like, you know, I, I kind of hear, you know, people like, well, if CPS show up, you know, you, you don't have to let them in. I'm like, look, I, there's limited options to me on what I should comply with and what I shouldn't. Yes, right. I know what right. I shouldn't, but if I go down, I can say like, no, look, you ain't got a warrant. I can do that, but I, that may come with a bunch of little headache. So right. You got to think about what's going to happen on the outside after that situation goes down. You know, like mm-hmm. it, it, it's a lot to think about. Like, do I comply or do I not? You know, not yeah, complying right. might make them think like, oh, well, something going on. We need to investigate. We need to do this. We need it, it just would be so bad if you didn't comply to it and and again it's like a thing like well i have nothing to hide like you know let's go ahead and get this over with it's so many different emotions you know it is and and, and seeing you know me t- tell myself like look mm-hmm. it, 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 it's just deeper because i have to get him off his computer <laughs> go let the teacher know you know we got a personal yeah. situation yeah, right. then after the, third time. the school. Okay, it, yeah. you're, you're talking oh. about the third time. Oh, the third time. The first two yeah. cops. Hold on. I, <laughs> wait, I'm wait, wait, wait. So there was more than two times. It was. Oh. oh, there was two in the first. The first one. Okay, the the mandated reporter who doesn't know that you call CPS and not the police called our police department, which gave us a nice police report with her name and phone number on it. So oh. we know who that was. <laughs> That was a bright one, Monica. Congrats. Then, well, um, Cody was in his state. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what happened between him and Beth, but he was enraged and he spilled all the beans. Everything. I know so much about Beth Mahar. (laughs) So much about her that I've never said anything, Beth. But you know what? I know. Um, and the thing that he told me was, um, I want to let you know that the second call was Beth. Beth called. So like there was two calls at once there, you know, okay. like, two calls consecutively, at once. like, and so when the CPS visit came, she's like, yeah, I had two calls, but the second one went directly to CPS, not to the cops. So that's why you, you didn't immediately know who it was. Oh. Then there is a third one in November. November 2020. And that's what he was just talking about. And that was when he came to the home. Okay. And and I was like, okay, did you talk? Because the the caseworker literally said she was like, they they made it unsubstantiated, the, you know, all of it. And she was the one, you know, that said, if you want to take legal action, you know, you can do that. And she did notify, say they notified their legal department so that if more calls came in, they would catch them and then proceed like legally. But, you know, this is a little bit of a different situation. So they were like, well, the person that called was a different person. So we still had to come out. And I, and I said, well, what is the report? She goes, it is exactly this, like copy and paste, exactly the same report, exactly oh, the God. same things. Um, and so like it slipped through because of that, because it was a, a different caller. And I said, look, right. you got to understand that this man has like at that time had 70,000 followers or whatever. I said, you can have a new caller for 70,000 days. Okay. A new person right. every day. So, yeah. So that was that um, as far as that went, but that's when she came in and she's like, no, I understand. And whatever she goes, but can I just see him? And he was here, you know, at home doing, doing e-learning at um, home. During right. The home. Right. So, I was like, see, I'm like, this is what's stressing my son out is this nonsense of coming in. You know, he's in school. I have to take him out of his class so you can look at him <laughs> because the, these Crazy. morons, and they're literally terrorizing my child, you know, and and she agreed. I mean, she she totally agreed. Um, but he even had nightmares. Do you remember when and John made a big deal about this when he heard about this? But when um, 
he was afraid that John was going to come back and get him. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like, seriously. He thought John was going to come back and get him. Because he thought John. Wow. Was and, and you know what? Um, someone had asked a great question. I was going to ask this, too. Like, is there any legal action you can take so people can stop it? Or, like, it's just a thing where it could happen at any time? Like, is there a way to stop this? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, time, all the time passing and everything. However, new evidence just came out about CPS calls, didn't it? So we'll see what the DA's office has to say. Mm. There. I'm not going to mess around with civil bullshit anymore. Well, let's just go criminal law. Right, right. J take it there. Because definitely yeah. this can't keep happening. You can't keep messing with people's children. It's not right at all. And especially just to do it out of revenge. And like, my thing is that I don't know like what you did for him to want, like, did, okay, I hate putting this, making you the guilty one, but did you do right. anything to him for him to react? I kicked him out of my house and let his husband stay. And since that then that. he's been... That was it. I mean, like that was literally it because he, it angered him so much that Cody actually stayed here with us. I mean, you if you listen to the calls that um, Yahoo Boy has posted, I haven't listened to everything yet, but um, he he's literally shocked that he hasn't heard from his husband in three weeks. Do you know what he told those people? I'm not kidding you. The first time the cop showed up here because he called Porter County. And he also called Blake County, apparently around the same times. Mm -hmm. um, Porter County showed up. Cody was gone. He had gone to the gas station. Porter County showed up. And this is just right after all the CPS stuff and everything. Um, and, you know, it's, it's you know, this is like a very teeny tiny little police station. You know, think Barney Fife and stuff. You know, it's, it, it's right. not. It's very small. <laughs> you know, it's not. And so, you know, the, the guy that came to the door is like, Oh, he was probably, you know, close to 70 years old. Honestly. I mean, he's an older guy and he comes to the door and our calls get routed through County, but then come to the department. Oh, so, okay. That's how they go. Yeah. So the cop comes up and he's like, Hey, you know, we got this call from, and he wants to talk to his husband and can you tell his, and I said, if you want, you can wait until he gets back and then you can talk to him yourself. And he's like, no, no. Can you just tell him to call his husband? And I looked this man square in the face and I said, um, absolutely not. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you need to go back and talk to Mike, the investigator, who is currently getting a no contact order against the man that just called. I'm like, you are asking me to have a domestic violence victim call his abuser. Absolutely right. not. No. If you want to wait and talk to him when you come back, you, you can wait. But no, I will not tell him to call his husband. No. And he was like, oh, OK. And then said something kind of. He's like, well, I, I didn't know who the wife and the husband is. And I was just like, oh, oh. I, I don't even have a time for, for a lesson like this tonight. No. Oh. Yeah. So kind of gives you an idea of what, you know, the mentality we were dealing with. Yeah, you know, what they think. Um, yeah, exactly. So that, you know, like, okay, I'm going to go call Porter County back and let him know. And that's what he did. And then the next day they showed up at Cody's work in Lake County. And he was so humiliated. He was so humiliated. This female cop came and inspected him. He had to lift his shirt. He's at work. And he had to lift his shirt. John told them that we were beating him and chaining him in the basement and not feeding him. I Honest to God. Honest to God. Honest to God. That is so crazy. Be and chaining. What, who yes. comes up? Like, yeah. what kind of fairy tale fantasy books was he reading? Like to say that you're. Uh... I, it's bizarre. When I have to explain this to like a legal person or something, I literally start out with like, honest to God, I wouldn't believe the story if I wasn't living it myself. That is how I start out because I'm like, it is insane. All of this is so insane. And that's how I, I explain it, you know, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was just one thing after another. And then, 
Oh, um, and before we continue, uh, real implication, I did see your comment. Um, Jolene did not send John the White Fragility book or any, uh, like, there's been this whole conversation about this book that Jolene he sent down. One. And I mean, then I'm sure saying, he could use it, but. Right. And he's saying, like, the book is racist or something. Like, and I'm just all like, what the hell is he talking about? 82. 82. Again, another oxymoron. He's over there. This race. That is white fragility, dude. You're it right there. <laughs> talking about the white fragility book. You are the guy. You, look it you up are the, the guy. It was inspired you by you. <laughs> right. <laughs> any sakes. It's just like, yeah. So, right. Yeah, I, I don't even believe that he actually got a book, honestly. No, he didn't. They, he, she never sent him this book. He's been saying this, trying. Basically, what it is is that he likes to do. He tries to spin a narrative that everybody else is um, racist and stuff like that to deflect off of him. Oh, I forgot about the um, salt shaker, the salt and pepper shaker. Oh, damn. Should I bring oh, the friends let, in? Let, me put, let me put you up on the screen solo. I'm still here in the background. This is what John left. Ooh, ooh, almost broke him. Sorry, ma'am. Um, this was left in my home. This is what I found. I, I'm always, wait, always finding, go straight there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, always finding new stuff. The dude literally packed his stuff in garbage bags. There's no luggage, duffel bags, nothing. It was garbage bags. So you can imagine things get left around, like in a garage, in a house that's under construction full of stuff. Um, so I, I won't be surprised once we clean the garage out, if I find more stuff, but this one I found, yeah, a little bit longer down the way, just a box of stuff that had all kinds of goofy crap in it. And this one, this like, just, it blew me away. The yeah. mammy salt and pepper shakers. Like this man literally like those are basically <laughs> for those of you who don't know history, are like caricatures of black yeah. people in the way they looked at us and drew us back in the day. And he had the nerve to have the, like, was he going to give that to you as an anniversary present or something? Like, what was <laughs> no, the idea? Just, their belongings are so bizarre. Like, they really just have boxes of crap that they take with them. Like, he had a whole box of, at least a whole box of um, McDonald's Happy Meal toys. Those are the things he cherishes. No, I'm not kidding. I gave the Care Bears to my dogs. Sorry, John. <laughs> Come on, John. My dog, Ray likes it. She sleeps on it. Yeah. I, don't worry. I cleaned it and I saged it. Don't oh, worry. good, good. <laughs> because them spirits that... Hey, if, when you say you were renovating your house, you might have needed demolition it and build it back up because I don't know what kind of spirits been up in that home. Like, there's a lot of spirits with, with that I got man. my sage. I got my sage. I had sage going behind me over here. For a while, trust me, we saged the hell out of the office back there because that was the room that they were in. But, um, but yeah, so right. yeah. And, um, and you and you know what the crazy part is because I'm not gonna say like he doesn't go after white people. I'm not gonna say that. That's a stretch. However, right. it seems like you know. I'll say this when it comes to the um to the black people. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen us, you know, call the cops, CPS, or send anything to his home. But it seemed like his hatred for us is a lot more than it is for everybody else, you know? Mm -hmm. No, no. I, I, I think women probably um, top black people. You're just a close Okay, second. you think it's women, and then, yeah. Women, and God forbid you're a black woman, because then you're- Well, really yeah, serious. he did, you know, call her a black woman nappy-headed, told her to go yeah. eat some watermelon. Um, Yeah, there was a lot he said, too. Yeah, so I guess that's his top of the food chain, I guess. Mm -hmm. he, he really hates women. He does. Very yeah, deeply. And that goes back to his, his childhood stuff, but mm -hmm. again, it's your job to fix it when you're an adult, not- not anybody else's. Now, a lot of people want to know, because, you know, I did do, do an interview with someone, and I seen the people in the chat terrorizing her, too. I was just trying to ignore it because I didn't want to get thrown off, and they were terrorizing her. But um, right. I did an interview with someone, and then all of a sudden, they had became friends with, um, you know, Cooter Brown again, a.k.a. JY. They became oh friends God. with them. Are you going to take this interview and then all of a sudden become friends with him again? In about 10 minutes, I am. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Come on. 
<laughs> you know, there is, I, hate is not in my vocabulary. You know, people that really don't know me as a person, they really don't know like inside me at all. But, right. Like, I, I can't hate. I, it's just not an emotion I feel. And I strongly feel that people that hate people, it's more about them. Like it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I've got my really despise you, won't miss you when you're gone. You know, right, kind of right. But I don't wish bad things on people and I don't hate because hate consumes the, the person that's hating. It takes over your life and your emotions. And and so I don't hate yep. anybody. But if there was anybody I was going to hate, it would be him. Right. Even over right. Donald Trump. Oh, it would be him. Over right. Donald Trump. And you know if what? Uh... Save one of them. I would save Donald Trump. <laughs> Damn. But um, oh no, the internet. Oh, I was going to ask, and Mina, thank you for bringing that up. I was going to ask about the um, uh, oh, here we go, here we go. She's coming back. The internet, the internet, the internet. I wanted to ask if she knew anything about the whole cancer thing. I'm gonna see if they'll come back up. Oh, and um, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Um, listen, uh, Trucy, uh, didn't they take pictures of your son and try to intimidate you uh, with them and then uh, receive the message about your beautiful little boy? Oh, wow. Wow. But um, yeah, I definitely wanted to ask about the uh, cancer scare. Like where, uh, like, did she know anything about? Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Jen, so much. I'm back. I'm here. Jason's going to get back on the internet. Help, Daddy. <laughs> I wanted to um, ask you, did you know anything about the whole cancer thing? I've I've known him. I've known him. Oh, there's like an echo. Do you have another screen open? Maybe. Hold on. Maybe. Hold on. Maybe. Hold on. Maybe. Hold on. Maybe. Sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, she's gonna come back in. <laughs> Sometimes when you drop out, it'll still have like another uh, thing in there. So, um, you know, sometimes uh, it'll have an echo and stuff like that, but definitely, oh, okay, here we go. Let me see. Okay, okay. Say hello and see if it works. See if it works. Hello, hello, hello. No, I'm <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I must have been having too many windows open, but that was kind of funny. Yeah, so did you know um, anything, so, about, the anything about the cancer? I have known him since 2016. I have known all kinds of personal information about him going back to before he really got into his blogging and whatever. I've never once heard him ever say anything. I mean, other than what I've heard, you know, from the internet. No, personally, no, never heard anything about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe his grandma died of cancer, but other than that, no. I mean, nothing about him. I'm going to tell you something. So John talks a lot and, and uses this a lot, which concerns me. Um, and you should never not take this seriously for anybody. I mean, you, you, you know, but he uses suicide threats an awful lot. Um, you see that come up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something and you can take it for what it's worth. I lived with him and I saw his arms and what he shows to people as suicide. When I, and, and I'm not saying, I, I, you know, he may have attempted in the past. I, I really don't know that. I can't say yes or no on that. However, what his arms look like, and I promise you that I have zero doubt about this because it is my field and I know what it looks like. He's a cutter. That, that's cutting behavior. The the arms, I mean, that that's, you look it up, look up cutting behavior on, I mean, th that's what his arms look like. So I can't verify that he's ever attempted and I would caution people to never not take it seriously if someone says it. I mean, that okay. doesn't mean okay. when, when he threatens it, I'm not saying like, oh my God, call a wellness check and whatever, because you should always take it seriously. But right. listen, right. I mean, look, 
try try to get a vibe before you you do that. Um, but he does play that an awful lot, and it's not sincere. So, and I do know those arms are from cutting. I know it, that it's triggering it, for people because there's people that really are going through things, and this guy is just using yeah. it as a tactic because you know it's coming up to towards the end of the month. Um, you know, the best time mm -hmm. to get online on YouTube is the 11th through the 26th, I believe, and so he's trying mm -hmm. to rake in all that money right now. So basically, mm -hmm. that's what it seems like a plot just to get money, you know, having these breakdowns mm -hmm. and all this other stuff, you know, it, it, it's sad that he's using that and it's triggering to people. It's yeah. very triggering. Right. right. Um, and it's very cyclic. It's very cyclic. It's the same. You, you mm -hmm. watch the up and the down and it end in that. And um, there's a lot of attention getting behavior and, and victim mentality and all that right. kind of stuff. Um, and usually, again, not always, you know, it, it's, it is a very, you got to be very careful around the subject. Yeah, um, it's, it's a slippery slope because, you know, we is. do say that it's a money tactic and just for attention. But then, like, you never want to assume that someone is lying just in case something does. So, right. you know, we right. try to take it lightly. But damn, it's only so many times you can keep saying this right. shit. Right. But generally, when people are going to actually do that they're not going to be blasting it on the internet. They're really not. They're going to be taking care of it. They don't, yeah. it, when people really get serious about that, they want to get, they want to achieve it. They want to make sure it's achieved. They don't want someone to stop them, you know? Um, and so for it to keep happening and happening, a lot of what right. I see is, is manipulating. Um, again, that doesn't mean he's never seriously thought about it or attempted it. It's certainly possible, right. but uh, but, one of the questions that I keep getting, <laughs> and I've been ignoring it because I know it's going, uh, it's going to be some shit when I say it. But did uh -oh. you see any um, usage of any substances besides alcohol? I'm glad you brought that up. Let me go, but bring me back to that 1882 when, um, because I want to go back to something else when we were talking about what's relevant to you. Okay. Okay. Um, we, we remember we we kind of got off on oh, a team. Yeah, we got sidetracked when it came to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Another question for you. I have two more. How did you okay. get the name Home Depot Jen? Like, where did that come? From? I believe Jolene gave me that name. I believe Jolene gave me that name because when I when okay, so way back when this thing happened with Sherelle, like it kind of came out of the blue, kind of just like this did today a little bit, and right. I was going grocery shopping that day, and I was like, look, I'm already in route. Out and that's when they wanted to go on and like I was going to Costco and they closed at eight so I'm like trying to do this and talk and still get through everything and get out because I was out of all this stuff and like get out in time so it was a pretty awful um stream that I did there I should have turned off the camera but that was the first <laughs> that was really the first time I ever went live and I had no idea what I was doing so yeah because yeah, that stuck around and like Whenever people talk about you, they call you HDJ or Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah. But can, you laugh at it, though, right? You laugh at it. I, yeah. No, it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> my friend, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. That's where it all started, Sherelle. You don't remember? <laughs> it's Sherelle's fault. It's her fault. Uh, <laughs> Yo, it was so awful. So I remember funny. apologizing to Perry. I was like, "Look, man, that was so bad." But like, it was on the spot because I was. I I remember <laughs> telling uh, Phil, I was like, "Can you ask him if we could do it later?" He's like, "No, it's now or never." I'm like, "Okay, well, this is gonna go however it goes." You know? Right? Because I know for um, me, if I'm not at home, I'll be like, "No, I can't do the live and stuff like that." Like, no, because I don't know internet connection. You know, some people be driving in their car and they be talking shit. They be like, "You beat you." I, I, uh, and I'm all like, I can't hear nothing because you keep glitching because you're driving. Yeah. I hate that. It's the worst. So well, if I'm not at home, I don't go live. Yeah. I mean, I might, I might now, but like that was literally the first time I had ever gone live. Any, and I was so like, you know, I get tense because I don't know how to manage things. And I'm like, eee. so yeah, it was not the best. But now I, I, yeah, I do like, I mean, I sat in front of my computer. This is my setup that I like, you know. Right, that's setup. awesome. And so who <laughs> are some of your favorite cast members from uh, 90 Day Fiance? Like, who did you really like watching and do you still watch the show? I do not watch the show anymore. It has really soured on wow. me. I do, I do. I mean, I, I, I hold 
TLC a little responsible, to be honest with you, just for the drama that they have, because I've watched from the beginning. Okay. The show didn't right. start out the way that it is at all, you know, and now it's like all about drama and drumming up drama and the care, you know, in the people's lives and, you know, just sensationalizing everything. And that contributes to this whole mess. It really does. It kind of creates that adds to that toxic environment a little bit. Right, right. Um, Wendy, thank you so much for the the 9999. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, 82 Wendy. out here. <laughs> hey Wendy. I can yes. even know. Yes, thank you so um, much Wendy. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, share all this light and <laughs> that's been molding in the dark. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, yeah, me, yeah, all the rock too. molding the yeah, exactly. You are right about that. Um, but yeah, so because again, now step back to where we are now. Now I've known this, I've, I've pretty much known this, this entire time, but we do have an actual cast member that is very deeply involved and called CPS for John. You need to go look at, um, Yahoo boys post uh recently he did say you could use it if you wanted to um yeah i mean i knew because cody told me like i said mm -hmm. when he was here he was angry that beth mahar was the second phone call to cps so again hey come get your girl tlc like right you know you're doing this shit <laughs> is that okay with you um, I mean, she harassed the hell out of me. She really did very badly. I was like, and I told her to stop. I'm like, so, you know, she noticed how she shut up after the court stuff, after she made a big to do over how I was lying about taking them to court for the, you know, it, it was so ridiculous. It was, she was right. Why would you lie about something like that? At that point, I'm like, what is happening with this woman? Like, what is going on? Um, and yeah, so that's why I, connect it to the show a little bit too. It's like, Hey, you letting your people out here do this crap? Like, you know? Um, so right. she's not my favorite. <laughs> that was a question. Um, my favorite. And I'm obviously very partial. My very, very favorite is Avery, Avery and Omar. I, I, okay. she's, she's, such, she's such a good, I don't want to call her a kid. She's a kid to me. And she's probably sick of hearing <laughs> that because I'm more her mom's age, but no, she's just such a great person. She really is. And has so much spunk and, um, she just believes in the right things. She, she does. That's you good. don't, you don't hear about it out in the world, but I know a lot of the things she does and she's a very good person. She has a good soul. So That's she's my awesome. favorite. And so, I wanted to circle back to uh, because you say it's funny how your allegations had got brought up, and I wanted oh. to circle back to what let's, let's the bomb that, that you were gonna. Okay, because we did start talking about the rental and everything and, and the things that happened there. Um, so why I behaved that way, um, where I was like, "Oh no," and I'd be, you know, if they were up, you know, and it was time to go to bed. I would not go to bed or go to sleep at least until they were downstairs because I didn't want them close to my kid's room. I really didn't. They were mad when we moved back into this house that we put them in the office room. It's the smallest bedroom of the three up here. And my husband and I moved into the room across from my son's. That mm -hmm. one is next to my son. The reason I did is because I wanted to be in front of my son's room. Right. I didn't want them in front of my son's room and I was there closest to him and they had the small room. And he really threw a fit about that. Like he thought he should have the bigger room in my house. He had the initially he thought he should hold my hat, should have my whole like lower level. And I'm like, um, it's being remodeled because that's where our master bedroom is. Like we're right. going to be living down there. <laughs> So, yeah, but, um, but yeah, because I seriously wanted to be right across from his room. So backing up the reason for all that is because, um, it, I don't even know why this even came up in, in retrospect. And it was early on, like maybe two weeks after they'd been there, but John started joking around about an organization called, what is it? Let me see if I can pull it up. I think it's spelled, it's Nambla. Nambla. N-A-M-B. 
L-A, is that how it's spelled? Okay, wait. Um, yep, that's the one. Here, I'm going to send you a link real quick. Um, here. Oh, my God. Let me find you. Let me is find you. Is that what I think it is? It Hold is. On, I'm about to go cross-sided for a minute. Let me read this. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, okay, so Nambula, as I understand, um, and this is according to Wikipedia, it's the North American Man Boy Love Association. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! And the rock, y'all yeah, just put it up there. Yep. This is for and he made a joke about that. He made a joke about that, saying something about and something in reference to Cody and and stuff. And as soon as that came out of his mouth. I like my walls went up and I was like, you are not going to be any, I'm like, I won't let my child be alone in a room even without. Yeah. Yeah. And that was early on. Mm -hmm. oh. So for them to do what they did to you, are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh yeah. my God. So allegedly he had made like this joke about it and like, mm -hmm. Why would he even, you're a mother, like, why would he even make a joke like that in front of you? This, at the time that they came to stay with us, um, and we were still at the rental, but again, the room was downstairs. I don't know if you remember the live he did with Tanya Maduro, or I, yeah, were they live together? No, maybe he just did a live about her. He was fighting with her at the time. She had talked about her sexual abuse um, history or something, and mm -hmm. he fought her on it. And I didn't watch the live. It was literally going on in my house and, you know, lower level or in the rental house. And I didn't watch it, didn't know anything. And Cody had said something to me about it. That's how I knew about it. Um, I think we might've been sleeping already. Um, and he said, John, he was pissed. Cody was pissed. He's like, John just announced on a live saying that he was molested as a child. He goes, Jennifer, I have never heard that from this man in all the time that I've known him. And he just said it on a live. He's like, I'm sorry. I don't believe it's true. Oh. And like I said, you know, I'm not going to say any more or anything, but um, John's not the only one with, uh, you know, some ucky stuff in their history um, out of the couple. Okay. And, you know. There's stuff there. Yeah. So. Wow. That is crazy. I mean. <sighs> and let me say this for people. Again, my area of specialty literally is domestic violence, sexual abuse, rape. That is what I worked with. Um, and I've had, I had clients that um, I dealt with where both parents had sexual abuse histories. That is a bad, bad mix. I'm sorry, right. um, you know, for those of you out there or whatever um, that may be dealing with a partner that has those. Um, and, and and I'm sorry, <laughs> you guys, but especially when it's male victims um, that women abuse too. believe it or not, they, they really do. I've seen it all. You guys, I've seen it all. Um, but it's if you're going to marry somebody that has those issues, you better make sure that you get that they have worked on their stuff and gone through therapy because that's a very dangerous mix to bring kids into. Okay. Right. And I'm very serious. That's for everybody. So when all those little things came up, I was like, Oh hell no, you are not going anywhere near my child. And then, so to hear what they did to you, the, the audacity is like, I, I can't believe I still get shocked by things that they do, but I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how we still get shocked because, you know, in reality, it's all like, oh, these people are disgusting. Of course, they think of this stuff, but it still is shocking to us, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, my mom alarm went off at that point and there was no way they were ever going to be alone with my kid ever, 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 ever. Right. Thank God, like, you just had enough you know, 
wherewithal to like know mm-hmm. like hey i need to protect my child i need to protect my family and get these mm-hmm. people up out of here like thank god good riddance you know um mm-hmm. my last question for you is there anything that you would like to say to him like well wishes or good riddance like you know anything you would say to cooter brown cooter brown may you have the life that you deserve and nothing less may karma give you every single thing you deserve and may you own every single nasty dirty thing that you've done to another human being take care I feel you on that one. I, I definitely feel you on that one. Jen, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you coming on and doing this interview with me. Um, there was a lot of puzzle pieces that we didn't know and we were able to put them together. And I'm just so glad that you were brave enough to share your story. Thank you so much. Thank you to Tim. Sure. Thank you to Jace. Um, just yep. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And. You know what? It's just time. It's time to put a stop to all this crazy nonsense. You got something to say? Right. (laughs) You You guys have a great night. Thank you so much. I'll be talking to you on IG a little later, okay? All right. Thanks, sweetheart. I'll talk to you later. You're welcome. Have a good one. Oh, man, you guys. Um, Like I said, I kind of just wanted to put the information out there. At this point, I'm all like, hey, you guys do whatever you want to with it. I can't keep telling you that this man is horrible. This man is this. This man is that. You guys are going to have to see it for yourself. And I think it's about time that people put this together and just show you like, hey, this man has a history of this disgusting, vile shit. Um, I just want to thank everybody for uh, the likes, the subscribes, the super chats, all that. Thank you so much. Shout out to uh, Jen and her whole family, Tim and Jace. Thank you guys for being brave enough to share your story and just let us know like, yo, this has been going on for a long time. And today this needs to be a stop. And I think Jen said it perfectly. Like, you know, you kind of, because you have other shit going on, you kind of go like, oh, well, you know, it's not that bad. And you just kind of forget about it. Right. But it's all like, no, this guy continues to do this bullshit and it's not right. And we can't let him. This is a, he's a a toxin, a cancer. Um, He's a hemorrhoid that you can't get rid of. Like this guy needs to be stopped. And I'm, finally glad that today we are all coming together and be like yo we need to get rid of this guy um again thank you to all my moderators i know the chat was kind of crazy going on today i didn't prepare y'all for this uh thank you to everybody who has shown me so much love thank you for all the super stickers super chats everything and of course thank you to jen tim and jace for coming on um oh hold on before we go let me show you my ribs hold on hold on because you know uh kenyana Hey, 82, how are you? I'm doing good. You know, I just got home, but, you know, I just got um, finished cooking. You know what I cooked? What you cooked? I cooked ribs. Can I show you my ribs? Please show the ribs. Let me show you my ribs real quick. Can you see my ribs? Y'all see my ribs? Y'all see my ribs? Oh, oh, no, my camera. Oh. Oh, this motherfucker. This motherfucker. (laughs) <laughs> All right, y'all, we out of here. Deuces.